Hi my dear students, today we will be going with the second part of gonadal hormones uh, that is the female sex hormone. Under female sex hormones today I will be dealing with estrogen and estrogen and SCRMS. Uh, I hope some of you might have read something I have um, read about estrogen that I had asked you to read yesterday uh, so, that, uh, so that this chapter will be easy to understand way. Okay, uh, let's go into our class. Starting with estrogen, e estrogen, mm, we will be going with the classification of estrogen that is natural estrogen which are produced by the body, synthetic that which are synthesized outside. Second, we'll go into the regulation and secretion and regulation. Third, we'll look into the therapeutic uses and for the side effects of estrogen. Coming to estrogen, estrogen is one of the female sex hormone. As I told you, it is either secreted by the uh, testes uh, in males or the ovaries in the females. Now, what are the natural estrogens found in the body? That is three types are there, estradiol, esterone and estriol. Estradiol, from where they are secreted. Uh, estriol, uh, estradiol is secreted by the graphene follicles, corpus luteum and plasma, uh, placenta in the females. While in the males, it is by the aromatization of testosterone uh, in the testis. Uh, I hope you remember the flowchart I had mentioned in my last class. That is, after testosterone is being formed, it is get it converts into estrogen. Okay, Th That is what is being mentioned here. By aromatization of testosterone, it forms uh, estrogen. And also by some extra glandular tissues in males. Now, these are the most active or potent form of estrogens. Coming to estrone. Estrone is the oxidized form of estradiol. The above mentioned uh, estrone, when in the oxidized form is estriol. Uh, that is formed in the liver. While estriol is bound, formed by the hydroxylation of estrol. Estrone, okay. Uh, the above drug by hydroxylation, okay. Now, if you ask me estradiol, the biochemical name of estradiol is 17 beta estradiol, the most potent form which is secreted by the ovaries. Estrone uh, formed by the extracellular, extra glandular conversion of androstenedione in the peripheral tissue, as I told you in my previous class. Estriol, I told you, hydroxylation of estrone is a conjugate metabolite of estrone and estradiol. Okay. Mm, a small difference. Now, I uh, tell you one more thing. Major site of estrogen production in premenopausal women is ovary, major site. While in postmenopausal women, estrogen is usually produced by the peripheral organs like liver, kidney, brain, and adipose tissue. That is, before menopause, it is by the ovary, which is the major site. But after a menopause, it is usually the peripheral organs like liver, kidney, brain, and the <coughs> adipose tissue. Now, after na natural estrogens, we come into the synthetic part. What are the synthetic steroids? Sorry, synthetic estrogens. There are steroidal estrogens and non-steroidal estrogens. Under steroidal, ethinyl estradiol, mestranol, and tibolone. These three names should be known. Under steroidal or synthetic steroidal estrogens, first one, uh, ethinyl estradiol, mestranol, and tibolone. These three are the major steroidal estrogen or steroidal synthetic estrogens. Under non-steroidal, just remember one name, that is diethyl silvesterol. Diethyl silvesterol. Have you heard about diethyl silvesterol anywhere? Mm, mm, eh, eh, at least I think maybe for your exams during your NEET exams for UG, they, will be, they might have asked you a drug that is given to pregnant women which produced carcinoma of vagina in females. That is this drug, diethyl silvesterol. When given in pregnant ladies, will produce female babies with carcinoma of vagina. I hope you remember that. Now coming to the synthes synthesis of estrogen. Synth estrogen. How and where it is being synthesized. Where I told you. Now how it is synthesized. As I told you earlier in my te testosterone synthesis, both estrogen as well as testosterone, both are se um, produced or synthesized from cholesterol. Now cholesterol forms pregnanolone. Pregnanolone will convert to progesterone uh, another female sex hormone which will be dealt in my next class okay from progesterone it is converted to 17 alpha hydroxy progesterone then to andro uh, androstenedione which is later converted to estrone from androstenedione it is converted to testosterone 
testosterone is then converted to estradiol. This is how estrogen is produced in the body. And the last part from androstenediol, all these takes place in the gonads, while the other part, that is the primary part, takes place in the adrenal, mid, uh, adrenal cortex. These are the sites, uh, sites, and this is how estrogen is produced in our body. I hope you understand um, estrogen is synthesized from cholesterol. Mm, and Finally, from androstenedion, it forms estrone, and testosterone, it forms estradiol. That too, in the respective uh, gonads. Okay. Going into the estrogen physiology, I had asked you to read about the physiology of estrogen from your physiology textbook. I hope some of you might have read. Today, I will be just uh, mentioning about the uh, estrogen role uh, in the menstrual cycle. Okay, I had to, uh, to uh, as we all know, for the first half of the menstrual cycle in females are maintained or controlled by estrogen, while the next half is controlled by progesterone. That is, proliferatory phase, you have more estrogen, while secretory phase, you have more uh, um, progesterone okay there is a difference in when um, if you ask uh, in females how they are secreted first half of the menstrual cycle by estrogen second half by progesterone coming to the actions of estrogen <coughs> now let us see where and what are the sites for action first coming to sex organs uh, in sex organs they are responsible for the pubertal change they help in the growth of uterus fallopian tube and the vagina plus it helps in menstruation in anovulatory cycles also enhances sperm pe penetration and also the deficiency will lead to atrophic changes in uh, female reproductive or tract <coughs> That means they are required for all the pubertal changes, that is growth of fallopian tube, vagina, etc. In menstruation, um, anovulatory cycle responsible for menstruation and in uh, males, uh, sorry, they also helps in sperm penetration. Uh, the secondary sex characters uh, related to estrogen, what are the other changes that it can produce? Uh, produce. First is the proliferation of duct trauma and accumulation of fat in the breast, uh, in that is increase in the breast size, plus pubic and axillary hair appear with the help of estrogen and also feminine body contours and behaviors. All the feminine characters appear as a result of estrogen at the pubertal time, uh, th that is as a result of the secondary sex, sex characters. Similar to our estrogen, estro uh, sorry, similar to our uh, testosterone as I mentioned in my earlier class. Coming to the other actions of estrogen, that is the metab metabolic effects. Anabolic action is there, but weaker than our testosterone. It is also responsible for pubertal growth in both males and, sorry, in both boys and girls. Coming to the bone, bone mass. Bone mass has been increased with the help of estrogen. How does it do? In bone, there are osteoclast and osteoblast. Osteoclast causes bone resorption. What is bone resorption? Bone resorption is a process by which osteoclast breaks down the bone. <coughs> they here it decreases or retards bone resorption and helps in the fusion of epiphysis. So it is good for the bone. Then coming to water and salt retention. Edema treatable by diuretics. <coughs> Blood pressure may rise on prolonged use. That is, it causes salt and water re retention. As a result, that can cause increase in blood pressure. <coughs> Now coming to glucose tolerance, higher doses as in combined with OCP, when combined with OCP there is impaired or normal blood sugar are not affected but in diabetes patient it is precipitated and the control of uh, sugar balance is being lost. So there is an, uh, derangement in the glucose level in the blood. The lipid level, the uh, estrogen uh, decreases plasma LDL, LDL which means a bad cholesterol uh, in layman's language. Uh, it causes decrease in the plasma LDL, increase in the HDL and also uh, triglyceride level, some, some level increases. So there is a high ra uh, raised ratio between HDL and LDL which is good. The lipid profile is be being maintained properly. Okay. Other actions includes blood coagulability. <coughs> There is, there is increased synthesis of clotting factors that is 2, 7, 9 and 10 um, also uh, fibrinolytic activity. So there is a formation of clot uh, in the body, some chances for formation of clot. Then vascular endothelium, in vascular endothelium they release nitric oxide synthase and prostaglandin, <coughs> uh, prostaglandin uh, I2 which is responsible for vasodilatation. Uh, 
uh, other organs like gall bladder and uh, increases lithogenicity that is increased cho cholesterol secretion and decreased bile uh, salt secretion bile salt secretion will be decreased also uh, <coughs> when going into the hormone binding globulins it increases the plasma sex hormone binding globulins thyroxine binding globulins and cort the cortisol binding globulins all these binding globulins uh, are increased Now let's see the receptors for estrogens. Estrogen, there are two types of receptor, estrogen ER alpha and ER beta. Both these subtypes are present in most of the tissues, but ER alpha predominates in the uterus, vagina, breast, bone, hypothalamus and blood vessels. They are predominantly present in the females, <coughs> uterus, vagina, breast, hypothalamus, bone, hyena and blood vessels. While ER beta is mostly found in uh, males, that is prostate glands of the males and ovaries in the females. Both E2 binds to both the receptors, that is estrogen, estradiol binds both to both the receptors with equal affinity. Certain ligands or types of estrogen have differing affinity, but these receptors have different pattern of interaction with coactivators and co-repressor. That, that last line is not needed because it goes into the depth of uh, receptor activity, uh, that is uh, my, um, bio, um, biochemical, not biochemical, biochemistry or deeper level of uh, receptor level activity okay so for you you should understand that is there are two kinds of receptor er alpha and er beta er alpha mostly in the female part that is uterus vagina breast bone hypothalamus and the blood vessels while an er B, um, beta is mostly seen in the prostate gland of males and in ovaries in the females this is uh, a pictorial representation of distribution of ER alpha and ER beta. Just know the difference that ER beta is just present in the prostate gland of uh, male. ER beta predominates or dominant in the males. Coming to the mechanism of action, <coughs> genomic, if, if you ask me, just know one action, that is it comes and binds to the specific nuclear receptor, that is estrogen receptor, causes conformational change, that is there is a dimerization of the receptor which, which will re react with the estrogen response elements, that ERE, of the target genes and causes protein synthesis or regulates the protein synthesis. This is what happens with estrogen and the action takes place at their respective sites. <coughs> Now, this is just the target tissue, uh, again a pictorial representation, it is present in the brain, can affect the brain, heart, liver, breast, uterus, uh, blood vessels and plus the bone. Uh, now, what are the beneficial effects of estrogen? In the breast, it helps in the br milk production. Uh, in liver and heart, it will control liver synthesis. Uh, in uterus, it prepares uh, for fetus, mm, that is uh, conception. Uh, and in bone, it, it preserves the strength, that is, it retards osteoclastic activity, increases the osteoblastic activity. Now, if you see what are the harmful effects of estrogen, Incre in, uh, if estrogen increases, it leads to breast cancer risk, plus in uterus, uterine endometrial cancer risk if estrogen increases. Now coming to the pharmacokinetics of estrogen, okay, that is ADME, absorption, if you ask me absorption, <coughs> it is all well absorbed orally as well as transdermally, another form, transdermally also, it is well absorbed. Natural estrogen is inactivated in the uh, liver by rapid metabolization when given orally. Now distribution, natural estrogens are largely plasma bound, they go and bind to the uh, sex hormone binding globulins as well as albumins. <coughs> And also, metabolism, as I told you, it is um, easily inactivated due to rapid metabolization in liver. Plus, it is converted to estron and vice versa in the liver. Estron is then converted to estriol. Phase 1, phase 2, phase 1 by conjugation and phase 2 by sulfation. Excretion due to deconjugation in the in intestine. Um, then it has enterohepatic circulation. Plus, mm, <coughs> uh, otherwise it is excreted out in urine and also some in the bile. So this is the e ADME, this is a small chart where I just uh, mentioned about how a how it is absorbed, how it is distributed, metabolized and excreted. In your textbook it is jumbled up and given. Uh, if you read this you can um, uh, correlate each correctly, okay? Okay, now coming to the estrogen doses, a small note on estrogen doses. Uh, parenteral doses, estradiol 0.1 milligram is equal to ethinyl estradiol 
0.1 milligram which is again equal to mestranol 0.15 milligram equal to conjugated estrogen uh, 10 milligram and <coughs> estriol uh, succinate uh, 16 milligram which is equal to diethyl silvesterol 10 milligram now this is just uh, to show you uh, uh, the um, doses uh, equal uh, how uh, 0.1 milligram of estradiol is equal to ethinyl estradiol. Now 0.1 milligram of estradiol is equal to 10 milligram of east and uh, diethyl silvestrol just to have a knowledge about the doses. <coughs> now uh, that 1, 2, 3, 4 all I'm, uh, what I have mentioned is estradiol as I told you it is or inactive orally mm <coughs> and the 2 conjugated estrogen partly partially only metabolized and 3 shows similar activity of both dosage form. Now, the preferred route for administration of estrogen is always oral. Intramuscular is usually given when a high dose of uh, estrogen is required, especially in carcinoma of prostate. Coming to few estrogen preparations. Estradiol intramuscular injection in the dose of point uh, 2.5 to 10 milligram. I told you intramuscular injections are at always at a higher dose. So 2.5 to 10 milligram are usually given as intramuscular injections. Conjugated estrogens are given in the dose of 0.625 to 1.25 milligram per day. They are usually orally for the for a condition named as DUB or dysfunctional uterine bleeding. Coming to eth uh, ethinyl estradiol, 0.02 to 0.2 milligram per day, you um, orally in postmenopausal uh, syndrome. Postmenopausal women who shows few features with deficiency of estrogen. <coughs> Coming to mestranol is 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 uh, milligram per day, again orally. Uh, two other preparations you should uh, remember is a topical prep uh, preparation uh, where the content is dineesterol. 0.01 percentage and transdermal patches we usually give estradiol uh, in, uh, <coughs> in the size of 5, 10, 20 centimeters square delivering about 0 0.025 to 0 0.05 and 0.1 milligram respectively depending upon the size of the patch uh, which is kept for uh, 3 to 4 days usually in post <coughs> menopausal syndrome. coming to the ADR of estrogens. In males what will happen if you give estrogen the female sex hormone. In males it leads to feminization, gynecomastia and decreased libido. In females there is an increase in the incidence of cancer to two organs that is the breast and the uterus with increased episodes of migraine and nausea vomiting. These are the two changes that can take place in males and females. Others ADS. Now other ADS first diabetes mellitus that is intolerance to glucose. Glucose intolerance leads to diabetes. Second fluid retention uh, fluid retention as I told you estrogen causes salt and water retention then hepatomas and cholelithiasis that is the formation of <coughs> gold stones are more are more seen in um, people taking estrogens and also there is a predisposition for thromboembolism now thromboembolism the reason is because of the formation of clotting factors and this leads to um, either uh, <coughs> pulmonary embolism and pulmonary embolism and deep vein thrombosis there is that is the episodes of thromboembolism increases in when patients are on estrogen also uh, um <coughs> my first slide i explained about diethyl silvestrol so there is an increased risk of vaginal and cervical cancer in female offsprings whose or who sp offsprings of mothers who have taken diethyl silvestrol in their first trimester <coughs> i hope this these are the i hope you understood with the adverse effects of uh, estrogen first in males what will happen uh, females what will happen and the other which include diabetes insipidus, uh, diabetes mellitus, uh, diabetes mellitus, hepatomas, cholelithiasis and also the episodes of thromboembolism increases chances for uh, vaginal and cervical carcinoma with diethyl silvesterol. Coming to the therapeutic uses. The first and foremost use is hormone replacement therapy or HRT in menopause women. In menopause, I told you there will be decreased estrogen secretion. As a result, few changes that are responsible by the estrogen are lost with these females. Okay, So hormone replacement therapy is the first use. Now, what are the problems that you see with a menopause lady? Physically, psychologically and emotionally are seen with these people. 
first one va vasomotor disturbances that is they experience hot flushes uh, hot flushes inappropriate sweating aches and pains everywhere you will be hearing after an age of 50 or 55 either they get angry very fast or they will be saying their body aches uh, body pains here and there okay second due to there is due to decrease in estrogen there is urogenital atrophy either vagina it is dyspareunia dryness and shrinkage of the vaginal regions okay <coughs> Utero, sorry, urogenital atrophy then since estrogen has an uh, effect on the bone that is it maintains or prevents a bone resorption help to maintain the bone mass uh, since estrogen is withdrawn at the menopause state there is osteoporosis and they are more prone for fractures psychological and cognitive behavior that is what i mentioned uh, irritability depression with loss of libido they, they either will be uh, irritated uh, if you ask if you go and ask pe people with some doubts they start blasting at you okay that is psychological and cognitive disturbances plus dermatological changes and they are also prone to have cardiovascular diseases like cad stroke mi etc after or uh, once they attain menopause now the dosage that is usually given in uh, what you say uh, in uh, hrt estrogen equivalent to 0.625 mg of of uh, ethanol estradiol per day in a cyclical manner so this is why it, i mentioned the dosage form in my previous chart okay this is the this is the dosage form of uh, estrogen in the hormone replacement therapy coming to the uh, hrt indications or where all hormone replacement therapy is being given hormone replacement therapy usually in post menopausal women or those ladies who are attain menopause what are the benefits or what are the indication um, first one vasomotor and other symptoms of perimenopausal period perimenopausal period that is <coughs> in a small effective dose can uh, prevent all these pictures that is vasomotor and other symptoms then post hysterectomy patients uh, estrogen only are usually given in young women with premature menopause uh, it can be indicated that is hrt is indicated in women with premenopause premature uh, menopause and also in perimenopausal women with cyclical hrt see this is the indications for hrt where all we can give hormone replacement therapy that is to prevent the uh, vasomotor si uh, side effect not side of vasomotor effects of decrease estrogen then post hysterectomy patient those who do not have mm, uterus or with ovary in there no nothing to produce estrogen young women with premature menopause and in perimenopausal women now what are the demerits of giving uh, estrogen <coughs> there will be no improvement in the cognitive disturbances that is once in dementia some people go into dementia but there no changes will be there see seen as dementia it will not protect against cardiovascular diseases as i told you previously uh, um, deficiency will lead to <coughs> cardiovascular problems uh, there is increased venous thromboembolism M mmi and stroke no uh, protection for such uh, uh, estrogen will not protect among uh, these conditions it is also not good for prevention of osteoporosis and fractures combined hrt increases the risk of breast cancer combined means in increasing uh, using progesterone also increases the risk of breast cancer gallstones and migraine and it should be assessed individually these are the demerits see east giving estrogen is good but so few of the side effects of estrogen are also produced in women who are given with these estrogen that should be assessed individually and the risk should be explained in uh, one hand before now uh, and synthetic estrogen uh, one drug is tibolon that is devel um, developed specifically for hrt it has estrogenic as well as progesterone uh, property the dose is 0.25 mg daily and it has a lesser chance for breast cancer um, breast cancer that is tibolon is a drug that um, given you now nowadays preferred for uh, hrt because it has the side lesser side effects when compared to our natural estrogens other estrogens okay i hope you got with estrogen so the estrogen what does estrogen do uh, and the demerits so if the if this estrogen is being given in ladies in menopause what are the other changes that can take place in those ladies that is side effects as well as what are the uses it can how it can help now estrogen replacement therapy this is also pictorial representation now uh, in estrogen replacement this is just estrogen not hormone replacement when we talk about hormone replacement therapy there not only estrogen is being given there progesterone is also being given but when we speak uh, estrogen 
uh, chapter, I just uh, I just mentioned about what are the changes that estrogen will do in hormone replacement therapy. So that is why I mentioned here estrogen replacement in menopause. What are the changes estrogen can do in menopause? Estrogen effects um, associated with hormone replacement therapy during menopause. What are the good effects? It strengthens the bone. That last line I mentioned in my previous slide does not do it uh, does not do any effect on osteoporosis. Only if some effect it does not do. Otherwise, it will strengthen the bone. That is fractures. Uh, it can prevent uh, fractures to a certain extent. Okay, uh, so strengthens form bone. It lowers the LDL cholesterol, raises the HDL cholesterol, and reduces menopause symptoms like vasomotor symptoms like uh, hot flushes. Uh, then the bad effect is on the organs that is constant estrogen on the breast can cause increase the risk of breast cancer in uterus uterine cancer and also the chance of uh, thromboembolism which is the side effect of uh, estrogen it can lead to uh, thromboembolism hepatomas and also cholelithiasis all these chances increases with uh, constant use of estrogen so this are these are the changes that estrogen can bring about in uh, menopause ladies okay Coming to the anti-estrogen group, as the name suggests, they will inhibit the estrogen block, uh, estrogen receptors. Now, the action of the um, uh, receptor present on the breast are usually involved, that is breast cancer only. Their application is over the breast cancer only. And some uh, may be estrogen agonist or antagonist. Such group of drugs is otherwise known as selective estrogen receptor modulators. Now we'll go in detail to what is SCRMS, uh, which are estrogen agonist, which has estrogen agonist and antagonistic property, uh, and few other drugs under anti-estrogens. Okay. Coming to uh, the drug uh, anti-estrogen that is clomiphene citrate. What is clomiphene citrate? It is otherwise known as fertility pill. This drug is used to induce ovulation. Now, how does it induce ovulation? They induce ovulation by inhibiting the act activity of uh, estrogens. So, it is uh, other name for your clomiphene citrate is fert fertility pill and it acts by uh, having an action or an antagonistic action on estrogen receptors in all the human tissues. Now, mechanism of action is by inhibiting the uh, feedback, estrogenic feedback in uh, feedback. Estrogen feedback mechanism is being inhibited leading to induction uh, of GNRS secretion. Now, where all it is used? Used in women with unexplained fertility or an ovulatory infertility. It can go bind to the both the receptors that is the alpha and beta, thereby inhibiting the estrogenic feedback mechanism of inhibition of the inhibitory and induces the uh, GNS uh, that is gonadotropin secretion. It will it this will increase the secretion of FSH and LH, causing um, what is that a rise in the mid cycle that is ovulation uh, in uh, causes LH surge as finally ovulation. Uh, also, the peripheral inhibition may lead to hot flushes. The peri peripheral inf uh, inhibition of estrogen can lead to hot flushes. So, as a result, with the usage of clomiphene citrate, we will have uh, ovulation that helps in pregnancy. Uh, it helps individual to have uh, to get pregnant easily by ovulation or production of ovum. Uh, the two side effects that you see is um, uh, multiple o multiple eggs can be multiple o ovulation leading to um, uh, syndrome known as hyper uh, stimulation syndrome where there is polycystic uh, polycystic ovarian disease or it can lead to multiple pregnancy more than one number of eggs are being uh, ovulated out okay Dose, uh, coming to the dosage, 50 milligram OD for fifth day onwards for five days of the menstrual cycle. Continued for two to three cycles. Conception occurs within four to six cycles. Here, the estrogen uh, is being inhibited for uh, ovulation. So, it is usually given as fertility pill. As the name suggests, it is usually used for inducing ovulation to become pregnant. Uh, the adverse drug reaction includes polycystic ovaries, multiple pregnancy, gastric upset, um, heart flushes, vertigo and allergic dermatitis. Other uses are assisted reproduction to develop multiple eggs, artificial insemination in patients which who has irregular ovulation and in oligospermia. Okay, these are the other uses of clomiphene citrate. Coming to selective estrogen receptor modulators. Now what are selective estrogen receptor modulators? <coughs> Okay, these are agents that act as estrogen antagonist, sorry, agonist. In some tissues, they act as agonist, and in some tissues, they act as antagonist. Now, 
antagonistic activity will be beneficial in some cases agonistic activity in some tissues are very beneficial for example uh, agonistic activity on the bone will help in and decrease resorption and help in prevention of fractures and osteoporosis while on blood it will help agonistic activity will help in better lipid profile <coughs> now antagonistic activity on in endometrium and breast will uh, antagonistic activity that will help to decrease the risk of carcinomas and also prevention of thromboembolism so agonistic activity are useful in uh, areas where there is on bone while antagonistic activity is important in the breast tissue now two important drugs that come under this group are tamoxifen and raloxifen tamoxifen and raloxifen we'll just see the drug in detail uh, tamoxifen has antagonistic activity over the um, breast tissues um, breast tissues and blood vessels okay they have uh, antagonism that inhibits the separate tissue so uh, if there is uh, estrogen and uh, antagonism of there they they help uh, they they do not form breast cancers so these drugs can be used in um, breast carcinoma uh, breast carcinomas okay then uh, this is the antagonistic activity while tamoxifen has uh, agonistic activity on uterus bone liver and pituitary so their use can be tamoxifen primary use is on breast cancer as they help in prevention of breast cancer uh, first early cases it can help then in advanced stages and the only approved drug for breast cancer in premenopausal women who are in early and advanced stages now other uses includes primary prophylaxis of breast cancer in high risk women as well as an alternative to clomiphene in male infertility so i'm um, just detailing once again about tamoxifen tamoxifen is an serms that is serms which is which are agents which have estrogen agonistic activity as well as antagonistic activity in tamoxifen uh, they have uh, agonistic activity over the uterus bone liver and pituitary since it has agonistic acti partial agonistic activity on uterus sometimes it can um, lead to the formation of uterine cancer uh, uterine or endometrial carcinomas but its usefulness lies in the antagonistic activity over the breast tissues it is used in the treatment of breast cancer coming to coming to raloxifen raloxifen the agonistic activity is on the bone and the cardiovascular system while the antagonistic estrogen antagonistic activity is on the endometrial and breast tissue as it has an antagonistic activity on the endometrial and breast tissue the incidence of endometrial as well as breast cancer will be reduced and since it has a partial agonistic activity on the bone it helps um, in uh, preventing bone resorption and osteoporosis if you see the mechanism of action it has a distinct dna target that is raloxifen responsible response element now the use it is a second line drug of prevention and treatment for osteoporosis in post menopausal women so this is about uh, raloxifen now uh, in tamoxifen you should remember it helps in 3b 3b's means in bone resorption is decreased uh, breast cancer is decreased blood in blood it helps to maintain blood mm, cholesterol level that is increases hdl and decrease ldl here in raloxifen it helps in the bone um, both the cancers uterus as well as breast cancers are increased uh, sorry decreased both these are decreased in uh, raloxifen okay i hope you got with the point what is serms and what what are the two drugs that come under serms and what are the actions they do Picto pictorial representation of raloxifen the good uh, the good effects that is it helps to strengthen the bone and decreases the ldl cholesterol it can reduce the risk of uh, breast cancer also uterine cancer than tamoxifen because it has antagonistic activity over breast as well as uterine tissues and fewer blood clots than tamoxifen the bad effects will be the hot flushes uh, are not uh, corrected and also no reduction in uh, lcis coming to aromatase inhibitors a small note okay now what are aromatase inhibitors i told you in my synthesis of uh, testosterone from cholesterol testosterone in the testes will get converted to uh, what, uh, estro estradiol now this is with the help of an enzyme named as aromatase this enzyme converts testosterone to uh, estrogen now our aim or the aim of aromatase inhibitors are the form and decrease the formation of estrogen this is by inhibiting the enzyme aromatase so uh, two drugs or three drugs that you should remember under this uh, aromatase inhibitors are letrozol ar uh, and anestrozol these two drugs names should be remembered letrozol and anestrozol now they are uh, 
just a few note okay usually for exam they ask you what are the two drugs which come under aromatase inhibitors and or sometimes they can ask you a short note on aromatase inhibitors letrozole they are all reactive non steroidal type 2 compounds which re uh, reversibly inhibits the aromatization of testosterone and androsenidion all over the body that is leading to total estrogen deprivation i told you uh, they inhibits the estrogen formation from testosterone they are usually used in um, early breast cancer that is first line adjuvant therapy for post mastectomy in er positive that is estrogen receptor positive post menopausal women uh, advanced breast cancer that is first line as well as tamoxifen failure cases such cases we usually prescribe aromatase inhibitors eximestine uh, no need to remember the name just remember letrozole and anestrozole okay Okay, with this we come to the end of today's class on estrogen. I hope you got some idea or some knowledge about estrogen. Uh, uh, if you get confused with what I told or what I spoke, please read the textbook and find out the difference. Or if if or if I made any mistakes in my presentation, please to point out and make um, correct me also. Mm, uh, I too can make a mistake. Okay, I hope you understood with uh, estrogen. First, you should know what is the classification of estrogen. That is natural and synthetic. Uh, the use of estrogen the action of estrogen at various sites plus the side effects then you should know what is anti estrogens uh, the serms a uh, what is serms selective is estrogen receptor modulators two drugs that come under serms i hope today's class was useful for you